we are doing the work. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. We know that prosperity will reward our hard work. We are not waiting for somebody else to do it for us, for us to appear with our business plan to show that we are smart. <laughs> we know how to run business. We are doing the work. We are doing the work. All right. To what we call the Freedom Pack uh, proclamation in which we notify the global community that uh, matters have come to where we are going to have to, you know, uh, save ourselves from uh, death. And uh, it was from there that uh, we moved on to the constitutional force majeure of uh, December 16, 2020. That constitutional force majeure is an ongoing thing until it gets to its uh, destination. That is, it is designed to wind down and wind up the operation of the 1999 constitution to terminate the union of death that it had imposed on all sides to also provide the framework for working out peacefully the replacements, which will be in two stages, in which people will be voting in the first stage, in referendum to recommit to a union, because the collapse of that constitution is the end of the union anchored on it. Anybody who doesn't understand this should go and ask Awalu Yadudu, the quota professor, that raised alarm in middle of 2020 that uh, that action of force majeure was going to compromise, that was going to unhinge the legal basis of the Federation of Nigeria. Uh, Walu Yadudu that processed that constitution for the military, for the Asalama Baka, who was, uh, he used to be, uh, uh, what's he called, uh, Abacha's chief legal advisor. Uh, Walu Yadudu to tell us when we say we have defeated the 1999 constitution. Uh, Walu Yadudu got wind of the constitutional force majeure before it was activated. He went, to, he went to the media. Guardian newspaper reported that. I'm sure if somebody researches, they will find it. Guardian newspaper reported that Professor Awalu Yadudu, the chief midwife of the 1999 constitution, did raise alarm that if this constitutional force major thing is uh, allowed to go, he was hoping that government could go and stop the people, the owners of the land, from, from, from exercising their sovereignty. He was saying that if that constitutional force major was allowed to, 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 to go on, that it will unhinge the legal basis of the Federation of Nigeria. I'm reporting to you now as co-convener of that NINAS with a whole number of people. You saw their names in the advertorial we took uh, when we put out the, uh, first, uh, the 128 statesmen cutting across the length and breadth of this alliance territory. I report to you today that that first major was rolled out it has met all the objectives. The consultations that needed to be done had been done. All of the preparations that had to be done in one place or the other are in place. And the legal basis of the Federation of Nigeria stands unhinged. And that brings us to the point where we now begin to ask what will happen. We are not anarchists. And therefore, in that first measure, we also made provision for the transition. We say, look, those in government house are not a problem at all. It is the constitution by which uh, our lives are being ruined that we are quarreling with. That's what we have been working to dislodge. And we've come to the point where there's consensus to get rid of it. The few people that gather to swear to defend and uphold that constitution, waving one party flag or the other, are just... How to kill all mosquitoes. All right. So that's it on that video. I'm going to pull out the next. Is there if we want to make an addition? Yes, please uh, continue to help us to share, like, and subscribe. This The first video, you just saw that all the things that needed to be done. Somebody was asking, oh, uh, over the week, someone was like, oh, all the thing that uh, UN is not coming to help us to fix that for a referendum. <laughs> I said, that's not what UN is supposed to do. So we want our people to be informed. There are things to be done. These things have the process yes I remember that criminal in those days you said yes it has a process for you to have referendum fixed there is a process there are things to be put in place and you had UN has already said it we told you to go and look at the UN declaration for indigenous people's rights uh, the, the document of 2007 go there is about 46 articles if you can read you see the things there. 
So the processes have to be put in place. You don't get referendum by shouting referendum, referendum 20 times on the radio. That's not the process. You don't get referendum by saying, come and help us to so give us referendum. That is not the process. Uh, neither do you sleep, sleep in Nigeria and wake up in referendum. <laughs> exactly. So if you allow yourself to be duped, if you allow, especially those in diaspora, because we know those on the ground, our people on the ground, we have food soldiers working and they're getting the accurate information. The only people being deceived are those in diaspora that have dollars and pounds to send to criminals. Continue to send. You will continue to be out there and they will continue to kill you and deal with you. The process is only Ninas. Only Ninas. Yes, there are up to 42, 45 groups making noise about freedom. Only Ninas is engaging in the stipulated process. The internationally acceptable standard for referendums and nationhood. It's only Ninas that is engaging in that process and they are continuing and that's what that first video was to tell you what and what we have done when we did them and these things are on the youtube with evidence for you to watch the video to understand if you want to follow so today's own that we're going to teach, uh, explain again is another milestone that ninas has met as we move towards uh getting our people free and comfortable in their own lives thank you Thank you, Sister Queen. The question of ruthless, ruthlessly preventing a change of power. Kill whoever you have to kill. Seize all their assets. Don't ever let them recover. Don't stop. That's what that means. You come down to the using the willing tools of the north the willing the minorities of the north as willing tools back to our map look at the people that uh, did the killings on behalf of that caliphate you see Gowan, you see that Duma, you see jeremiah Yuseni, you see david mark hmm. Hmm. and the whole number of them hmm. on that map 80 percent of the killings that had to be done they present over it. And that's how they could come to the victory charter. At the close of proceedings in 1970, everybody had been beaten down. Oh, yes. Let's kill the Igbo and their neighbors. And so the victory charter from that uh, war was what became constitution between 75 1975 and 1979. Now look at who processed that constitution for them. Yes, Motola Mohammed commissioned it, Kano. But they, he died in February of uh, 1976, and so his uh, second in command, Ulusha took charge and then executed what would become the permanence. It, the Amadou uh, Bello meant that this situation in which the Fulani will prevail and own Nigeria hmm. must be permanent. So the constitution, the unitary constitution that was imposed as victory charter from that war of 67 to 70, the so-called Biafran war, is uh, the mechanism by which the victory was made permanent. So the uh, victory was codified and it was a member of the slave south, the conquered, a member of the conquered territory from the, the because if you are conquered, you are a slave. So Obasanjo essentially was the head slave who had to do for the master what the master wanted. And so Obasanjo presided over the processing of that victory charter into constitution that became 1979 constitution. And it was the same Obasanjo that that caliphate found to bring her from prison in 1999 to reinforce and reinstate that uh, 1979 constitution. That is, that is where we are. It is that victory 
of having that Amado Bello's vision transformed into reality in post, all our assets are gone. The, the oil and gas of Niger Delta is taken by that constitution.